Hey guys, it's Barrett with the Gaming Camper. A lot of people ask about how the portable air conditioner is working out in my camper. I've been more than happy with it so far, so we'll go over a couple of changes that I've made just to kind of show you what I've done differently and how it's going coming up right after this. So the Serene Life portable air conditioner has been working great. I've heard a lot of people saying that the single ducted units don't work at all. I'm going to say that this air conditioner does make a huge difference. I'm going to try to run a test run in the future. I'm not gonna be able to get it done for this video, but just with in the hot summer, which is cooling off right now, but in the hot summer, I'm gonna to try to show you kind of what the temperature difference is with just this unit running in the living room of my camper on a hot day down here in Tennessee. I will say that the double ducted units, yes, they're more efficient. Yes, they're better. Well, a split AC unit's gonna be better than that. And you know, everything's based on levels here, but it's very unconducive to have a double ducted unit portable unit in a camper because you're going to have so much more space and stuff. I did, you know, protect the ducting. I insulated it and everything. And for all that, you'll have to go back to my original install video that's going to be up here. I can go ahead and tell you that this thing makes an amazing difference in the hot summer. Also, one reason that we use this thing is because we have the 15 amp power inlet that we installed just for this. So essentially it's like plugging this into the 20 amp service because a lot of places that we go only has 30 amp service. And so a second AC didn't really work out that well for me, a rooftop unit, because we weren't gonna be in a lot of places where we could use it. I mean, some people do run two rooftops rooftop ACs with soft starts on them on a 30 amp service. But, you know, I just figured that this was gonna be the best for us. I also like this because this unit also is a heater and it also has a dehumidifier. Now, what are some things that haven't worked out as well as I'd liked? Well, the first time that I used this system, we were at Honeysuckle Meadows and Pigeon Forge and we were winter camping. Now, number one, I'm gonna tell you that if you go to the Pigeon Forge area, that's my favorite campground so far. That has more campsite area than anywhere that I've ever been so far in my three years of professional camping. And that's, if you're gonna go somewhere with full hookups in that whole Pigeon Forge area, which I would personally avoid anyway, but if you're gonna do it, that's where I would go. And that video is gonna be linked down in the description. Now, the first time when we were there, it was pretty cold and we were using this unit for the first time, we were using the heat. Now, I'll say that when I was sitting at the table, which is right beside the unit, I could just feel that frigid air coming through the Luon that I have over the screen of the window where the vent is. And so with this, I did go back and I put some Reflectix on the outside of that Luon. And since that, it's made a world of difference. Hot or cold, you can't feel anything coming in or out of there. I know it's not like the most best insulated system in the world, but it's a portable system and a camper and it works pretty good for us. The only problem I've had out of the actual unit is occasionally it needs to be drained. It's supposed to like dissolve a lot of the moisture through the vent and outside, but occasionally it does need to be drained. I'd initially thought I'd use it as a dehumidifier as well, but the truth is, is the internal tank is very small and every time I've tried to drain it, I've spilled a little bit of water in the floor. So I actually started lifting the whole unit up on the counter to drain the tank into the sink. I did use like an elbow adapter once with a cutoff valve and I thought, oh, this would be easy to drain it out, but that thing leaked all over the floor. You wouldn't try that at all. But really it's not that big of a pain to lift the whole thing up on the counter and just dump it right in the sink. I will say it's only about once every couple of months that I actually have to drain this tank and that's using it for a three day weekend trip about every other week. Everything else has been great with the unit. And when I was looking at the air conditioner on Amazon, it said there was a cleanable filter, which I hadn't even thought to look for before now. 
uh, but I've never cleaned it and I'm going to have to dig into that. I've still, at the time of this video, not gotten around to that. I'm going to go through, you know, I cleaned the coils on the rooftop AC a few weeks ago. I'm going to go through and clean these out before next spring. And whenever I do, I'll figure that process out and I'll share it with you here. But I'm not sure if there's an indicator light. I have a window unit on my house. It's got a, an indicator light showing that the filter needs to be clean. But I've not ever seen any, any filter lights or indicators on this unit. So we'll just have to dig into that a little bit. So my update for you is that it's working great. I'll continue to use this in the winter and summer for as long as I can see. And whenever we have 30 amp service, it still works out wonderful for us. We love it. The biggest problem to putting one of these units in your camper is going to be finding a way to run the duct. A lot of people just use some tape around there. The problem is, is that the, the return, it comes in a rectangle. And I've tried to tell people about this that have had like some reviews of some air conditioners and stuff on their channel without actually installing them, that that's the hardest part. And so that rectangular piece that you get, number one, your windows in your camper aren't rectangular. They appear that way till you look at them real close and the edges are rounded. Um, because of that, that does make it hard. Some people do just like tape it in the window or something like that. I personally believe that using the, the little piece of Luon that we have that's just attached to the screen frame mainly, except for a couple places where I missed the screen frame and I went into the window frame. But I think that that's the best option. I was worried that bouncing down the road, it would that hose would just fall out of there, but it's it's made it about a year and a half, two years now, and it's not had to be reapplied not one time. So I think that it's working great. I'm happy with it. And I just wanted to share with you guys that it's working out well for us. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.